membranous nephropathy is one of the most common causes of nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a syndrome that's characterized by severe proteinuria. In other words, we're leaking a lot of protein in the urine. My name is Dr. Sanjeev Sethi. I'm a kidney pathologist at the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. My name is Dr. Shane Bobart. I'm currently a nephrologist at the Cleveland Clinic, Florida in Weston. And I completed my nephrology training at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. The article we will be discussing today is a target antigen based approach to the classification of membranous nephropathy. It will be appearing in the March 2021 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Now, membranous nephropathy for as long as we know it has been classified into two groups, primary, where there was no disease association with it, or secondary membranous nephropathy, which had some sort of a disease association with it. Usually it was an autoimmune disease like lupus, sometimes malignancies, cancers in other words, and drugs and infections were also part of the secondary spectrum of membranous nephropathy. So for the longest time, we had two disease groups for membranous, primary and secondary. Two major studies, one in 2009 and 2014, identified the cause of primary membranous nephropathy. In other words, what they did was they detected specific markers or antigens that were responsible for this immune response that caused membranous nephropathy. And these two were what we call now PLA2R and THSD7A. Uh, these are the two proteins that were characterized in 2009 and 2014. These two are responsible for approximately 70% of the primary membranous nephropathy. In the remaining 30% of the membranous nephropathy, we did not have an etiology or a cause. The secondary membranous that I just mentioned, the ones that were related to autoimmune disease, cancers, uh, occasionally infections and drugs, we had no idea what the underlying etiology or what the antigen was. Here at the Mayo Clinic, we had been using mass spectrometry uh, for various other disease groups. And then in 2017, we decided to give membranous nephropathy a look. What we did was we took membranous nephropathy patient biopsies that were PLA2R and thrombospondin negative or THSD7A negative. And we tried to find proteins that may be responsible for this remaining 30% of the membranous nephropathy. And using this technique over the last four years, we have been able to identify at least four new antigens. So for example, the first one we identified was what's called exostosin one and two. And what we found was this was prevalent in the secondary membranous, that's the autoimmune patients. Subsequently, we found one more protein that's called NEL1. Uh, and that was both in primary and patients who had cancer. We found another third antigen recently, and that's called semaphore in 3B. This was present in pediatric membranous patients. Lastly, recently, the manuscript is in press. We have found another protein called protocadherin 7, in short PCDH7, which appears to be another antigen for primary membranous nephropathy. So bottom line is now we have six or seven antigens for membranous nephropathy, whereas just until three years ago, we had only one or two. So there has been this increase in number of antigens uh, for membranous nephropathy. The line between primary and secondary membranous nephropathy as a result has become quite blurred because some of these antigens are present both in primary and secondary. Some are only in primary and some like exostosin are only in secondary. So there's quite a bit of blurring of what's going on with membranous nephropathy. The old classification of primary and secondary is kind of obsolete now. And the aim of our current study was to examine this large population of membranous nephropathy present at the Mayo Clinic, reclassify them based on the antigens that we have detected and see what the clinical findings are in these patients. Uh, and that's what I think Shane is going to now talk about. Since the discovery of several target antigens for membranous nephropathy, the current classification of membranous nephropathy into primary and secondary forms is becoming obsolete. So we propose to classify membranous nephropathy based on the target antigen involved in its pathogenesis 
and the associated disease if present, essentially establishing a clinical phenotype for each target antigen. To do this, we utilized a cohort of 270 patients with a native kidney biopsy diagnosis of membranous nephropathy with available clinical and pathological data, and we were able to determine which target antigen was present or absent and assessed for the presence or absence of any associated disease. Additionally, we sought to establish if there was any causal relationship with the associated disease and the membranous nephropathy, or if they were merely coincidental. So of the 270 patients, roughly 80% of the patients were PLA2R positive membranous nephropathy. Of these, approximately 16% had an associated disease. A thorough review of their clinical course showed that this associated disease was merely coincidental and did not play a role in the progression or impact on the course of the membranous nephropathy, suggesting that PLA2R positive membranous nephropathy has merely coincidental associated disease. We found one case of thrombospondin 70 associated membranous nephropathy, strongly associated with the malignancy, which is consistent with the literature. We also found six cases of NEL1 associated membranous nephropathy, and those cases that had a malignancy demonstrated a very strong causal association with the malignancy. We found one case of NCAM1 positive membranous nephropathy, Three cases of proctocadherin 7 membranous nephropathy, which did not have associated disease in our cohort. And we found, we found 11 cases of exostocin 1 and 2 positive membranous nephropathy, of which the vast majority had autoimmune disease. And finally, we did not see any cases of semaphorin 3B membranous nephropathy because our cohort was completely comprised of adult patients. And this antigen, is typically found in the pediatric population. That left us with 28 patients with what we considered septuple negative, meaning none of the antigens were found in these patients. And the vast majority of these patients had an associated disease. And we believe these patients represent a small group of patients that do not have the target antigen identified as yet. So what does this mean for clinicians? As these target antigens become clinically available, they will allow clinicians to focus on which form of treatment will be preferred, such as using immunosuppression or treating the associated disease, such as an amal a malignancy. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.